The use of medicinal plants is older than recorded history. I would agree with any historian that says that medical history began with plants. Now, plants are still even crucial today in the medical field. If you want to know how the ancients made history, keep watching. And at the very end of the video, I do provide a summary for those of you who need it, specifically the bot students. Let's get started. Hello and welcome to Reign of Knowledge, where knowledge is king. Strangely enough, the ancients were actually completely obsessed with garlic. Ancient Egyptians gave garlic to people with abnormal growth, such as abscesses. And the ancient Greeks gave garlic to soldiers to give them courage. Even the great, the great Greek physician, the father of medicine, Hippocrates, whose name I can't pronounce, advocated garlic to treat all types of medical conditions such as digestive disorders, uh, treatment of wounds to fight off infections, and even as a cure for leprosy. With regards to that cure for leprosy, I'm not exactly sure if garlic is a cure for leprosy. I looked through the internet and I couldn't find anything. If any of you guys have a case study for me to see about um, leprosy and garlic, please put it in the comments. I'd really love to know because I can't find anything and it's frustrating me. And remember, not everything that is in this video about garlic is true. A lot of the stuff is just claims like garlic can't actually give you courage, although I wish it could. I really do. It would make my life so much easier. Okay, however though, garlic has been proven to be antibacterial and antiviral, and this is thanks to the wonderful bioactive compound, allicin. And I really think that is how you pronounce it. I apologize if I'm wrong. This bioactive compound might even have anti-cancer effects. Just a quick disclaimer here, anti-cancer does not mean it cures cancer, okay? There is no such thing as a cure for cancer. I personally believe that you cannot cure cancer because of the way that it is. Uh, if you want me to elaborate and make a video on that, let me know. Okay, so anti-cancer just means it's a preventative measure. At the end of the day, nothing that you take will prevent or cure cancer. The only thing that you can do is take prevent preventative measures to ensure that your chances of getting cancer are less likely. That's really all you can do. Okay, moving on. Real quick, I must emphasize that these properties only apply to raw garlic. Once garlic is cooked, these antibacterial, antiviral properties, they all go away. As this is actually the case with most things. Once it's cooked, once it's pro processed, the more cooked and more processed it is, the more of its health benefits actually go away and basically are destroyed. And as far as the internet is concerned, garlic, it's the same situation. However, although raw garlic is mostly safe, if try semi-cooked garlic for yourself. If you react fine to it, then have raw garlic. And yes, if you react fine to it, then it's fine. But if you do not react well to it, that's your body telling you not to eat it. And please, if you feel sick after eating it or anything like that, don't eat it. And yes, no matter what you do, you're going to have bad breath. In ancient Rome, Japan, and China, garlic was used to treat respiratory ailments, arthritis, convulsions, animal bites, alleviate depression, and for male potency. Remember, not everything that garlic used to be used for is actually useful. Another quick warning, garlic may actually be unsafe if applied to skin, so just know that before you apply it to a wound, rather use modern medical stuff. South African history specifically, we have Agosma betulina. I pronounced that wrong, but the more common name is buku or ibuku, or in Afrikaans, uh, buhu. Buku is part of the cultural heritage of the Khoi and the Sun people of South Africa, the indigenous people of South Africa and was used and is still used today for cosmetic reasons and for antibiotic protection. Buku leaves were and are still today also chewed to relieve stomach complaints. Back in like way back when, uh, when the Afrikaners first came here, aka the Dutch settlers, 
we took buku and steeped it into brandy, meaning we uh, soaked buku, probably the leaves, in brandy. This was called uh, buku brannewijn. For those of you that aren't Afrikaans or Dutch, as far as I know, Dutch is the same. Um, yeah, buku is this buku, and then uh, brannewijn is brandy. So, yeah, it's very buku brandy. And we use that f to alleviate everyday stomach complaints. It was used as an everyday stomach remedy. Another thing the early Dutch settlers did is that they made uh, buhu asain. Uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, asain is the Afrikaans and I think also the Dutch word for vinegar. So it was buku vinegar that they made. And this was notorious for the cleaning of wounds to fight off infection or prevent infection. So again, antibacterial, antibiotic protection right there. The most historically important plant in South Africa is known as Hudai Gordoni. I think I pronounced that right. And was originally used by the San people, the indigenous people of South Africa as a appetite suppressant to suppress thirst and hunger. And of course, not surprisingly, now Hudai Gordoni exists as teas and supplements for people looking to lose weight. Um, I don't really agree with using it to lose weight, but I'm not a doctor, so talk to your doctor about that if you want to use it. And then, yes, this, this plant created a massive problem because the thing is a bunch of corporations of course patented Hudai Gordoni patent is when you basically make it so nobody else can sell it except you it's your product and of course the Sun people got pissed off and bioprospecting and a whole law was passed thanks to this Hudai Gordoni plant and I will have an entire video about bioprospecting because I could go on for it about it for hours so subscribe if you want to stay tuned for the video about bioprospecting. Real quick, just a message for everybody. Um, all of these chemicals, uh, Hudai Gordoni, Allison, the main bioactive compound of garlic, and even um, the bioactive chemicals of buku, they do exist as supplements, and I know people love taking supplements. Um, just fair warning, before you go ahead and grab those supplements, please go see a good doctor. I say good doctor because there are some doctors who scare me and should not be doctors. Sorry, Dr. Mike, I know you don't like to hear that. So please go see them. Some supplements, I think the scariest thing about supplements that I've heard is that there was a study done where they actually found that some supplements, because of how badly regulated the supplement industry is, some of them have none of the ingredients that are listed on the bottle. The ingredients list, they had none of that. <laughs> that is so scary. Now, this, this is not all supplements. This is just some supplements that happened. And hopefully, unfortunately, the supplement industry is not well regulated. So your doctor might know which ones are more trustworthy, which ones aren't. And yeah, that brings us to the end of this video. Okay, here is your exam summary for you bot students out there. I hope this helps you. And I hope you are all well. All the best. Hope to see you next time. Don't forget to ask questions. I love questions.